Hello friends, welcome to Science Land. I am Nikita and today we are going to talk about ozone layer and how it has formed. So let's start. Ozone layer is also called as ozone shield because it protects the earth against harmful UV radiation from the sun. It acts as a shield. Ozone layer has or contains O3 molecules. O3 as in the molecular formula for ozone and O3 is triatomic oxygen. Ozone layer is present in the lower part of the stratosphere. So, there are many layers of Earth's atmosphere. I have drawn three layers. The first layer is troposphere, second stratosphere, third mesosphere. Ozone layer is present in the stratosphere, in the lower region of stratosphere, just above the troposphere. Ozone layer absorbs 97 to 99% of the medium frequency UVR, UV radiation. So, to understand that, we need to know the basic of UV radiation. UV radiation is essentially divided into three types, depending on the wavelength associated with it. So, UVA, UVB, UVC. 100 to 280 nanometer wavelength is UVC. 280 to 315 nanometer wavelength is UVB. 315 to 400 nanometer wavelength is UVA. Now, when this radiation the entire UV radiation falls on the ozone layer. UVC being the most harmful will not be allowed to pass through. UVB has benefits and disadvantages both. So partially it is absorbed by the ozone and partially it is let through. So that's the reason I have drawn the you know width of UVB thick here and it's very thin here. A little bit is absorbed by the ozone. Now to talk about the benefits and the disadvantage, UVB is required to produce vitamin D naturally in human beings. Disadvantage being if human beings are exposed to UVB for a longer period of time, there might be direct genetic damage, cataract, skin cancer, sunburn etc. associated with UVB. UVA is freely passed through the ozone layer because it is the least harmful of all the three types. But evidence suggests that you know there might be indirect genetic damage or premature skin aging associated with UVA. So conclusion is ozone layer absorbs medium frequency UVR which is 200 to 310 nanometer wavelength meaning these two wavelength of UV radiation it will absorb. Now let's talk a little bit about history of ozone layer. Two French scientists discovered ozone layer Charles and Henry. Their hypothesis was if sun is emitting UV radiation and earth is receiving the UV radiation on both the ends the spectrum of UV radiation should be the same right but that was not the case. On the receiving end, there was no radiation below 310 nanometer wavelength. So their hypothesis was there is something in the atmosphere between sun and earth, which is essentially absorbing this, you know, radiation below 310 nanometer wavelength. So what happened later, the missing radiation was pointing to one chemical, which was known as ozone. Then came the person called as Dobson. He was I think a British meteorologist and he developed spectrophotometer which is in today's world but at that point of time he called it Dobson meter to study the properties of ozone extensively and then he came up with a unit to measure the ozone in a vertical column overhead which was known as Dobson unit. So this is the I feel an important history of ozone layer which we should know. That's the basic of ozone layer. Now we will study how it is formed. Okay let's study how ozone is formed. But before that just a little concept. O2 is the molecular formula for oxygen meaning two atoms of oxygen are together and there is the double bond between them. If that double bond is broken, you have two nascent oxygen, the square bracket meaning that is the oxygen's atom, which is a single atom. 
So the first step is creation. A molecule of oxygen is photolyzed, broken down in presence of UV radiation to give two nascent oxygens. And these two nascent oxygen will further combine with two molecules of oxygen to produce two ozone molecules and the kinetic energy is produced. So the ozone molecule is formed in the first step. Now there is the second step which is known as ozone oxygen cycle. It is also known as Chapman cycle because the person's name was Chapman who discovered this thing. One molecule of ozone under the presence of UV radiation which is the appropriate range 240 to 310 nanometer wavelength will break down into O2 and oxygen. It's the reverse of this particular reaction. This is for two molecules throughout and this is for one molecule. No difference. It will be breaking down. Again, this nascent oxygen will further react with another molecule of oxygen to produce ozone and kinetic energy. So you will be questioning why this breaking of ozone and then again it is forming. Essentially because the right or appropriate wavelength of UV light should be absorbed without the loss of the ozone molecule. So the ozone converts into oxygen again it converts into ozone. So that helps the molecules of ozone to remain constant in the ozone layer. Now you would ask me one more thing which is the kinetic energy. What is this use of kinetic energy? You know you remember I said you the ozone layer is present in the stratosphere, the lower part of the stratosphere right. So this kinetic energy will uh, be converting into the heat energy and the stratosphere is basically heated because of this kinetic energy. We know a concept which is there is decrease in the temperature with increase in the altitude, right? The more up to the mountain we go, the less temperature it is there, right? So troposphere we went. Ideally in the stratosphere, the temperature should go down further, but that doesn't happen because there is this process called temperature inversion, which occurs in stratosphere because of this kinetic energy. Kinetic energy released here during these uh, steps is converted into the heat energy. And then again further from stratosphere, again the temperature will decrease again. This is how the ozone molecule is again and again recycled forming oxygen, ozone, oxygen, ozone and it continuously does that. Sometimes however there is removal, removal of ozone molecule. How? The ozone molecule instead of breaking down into the normal O2 and nascent oxygen, it will be reacting with a nascent oxygen. It will give you two molecules of oxygen again. I don't know if you know the mathematical calculation of chemical reaction, but that's how we were taught. Three atoms of oxygen here plus one atom, four atoms and here also two atoms into two, four. So the equation is balanced. That's how the ozone is converted into oxygen. That is the removal of the ozone molecule. Now uh, the nascent oxygen, the concentration of it usually is so less that usually the step doesn't occur. But what happens is there are other products or other substances in the ozone layer which are free radicals, compounds with chlorine, bromine, OH radical etc. If that free radical is combined with O3, it will lead to ozone depletion. That's the end of ozone layer and its formation. I hope whatever information I gave you, it helped you. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.